You may well be wondering why I've got a picture of two chocolate snowmen. Well, I thought it would be far less fattening than actually consuming the snowmen and it's going to last longer. <laughs> but no, it was for something I was doing on my website, part of a challenge. And when I'd finished with that, it suddenly dawned on me the fact that this could actually make a really good glass style Christmas bauble. So that's what we're going to take a look at doing in this video. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool. Now under the tool options just make sure it's the elliptical one you've got selected and make sure as well that you've got the new selection. So just click on this. Right coming into the image I'm just going to zoom out a little bit into that area there. I'm going to click down drag it out over something like this. Now if you press down shift Look at the way, if I pull it down, it's elliptical. As soon as I press shift, it becomes round. Now that is important. So press and hold down shift on the keyboard. You've now got a perfect, perfect sphere, spherical. Yeah, round. You can tell the concentration, can't you? The other thing is if you've got a selection and you want to make it a little bit bigger, if you go to select, you can drop down to transform selection, which now puts the transform tool around the selection you've made. You can then use the transform tool to make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to take it into that area. I'm going to click OK to it. And because we've got the new selection, I can move it around into this position. That should be pretty good. We're now going to use Command J, Control J, Command J, Control J. We'll copy that selection and pop it onto a new layer. There it is. That's what we've got so far. Right, let's just get rid of this for a second. I'm going to press V on the keyboard. V on the keyboard has now given me the move tool and we can move this selection around. We can place it anywhere on the image. I'm going to place it in this position here. Right, now that we've done that, let's change it into a glass sphere. Now the first thing we need to do is come over to the layers panel. I'm going to press command or control. Look at the way the cursor changes, gets a square on its back. We're going to click down. We have now made a selection around our cutout. We're going to come up to filter. We're going to drop down to distort. We're going to go to spherize. Now it is important to have this selection because when you're using the spherize, if you don't have the selection, it will distort it outside. So uh, that selection is holding everything into the middle. We're in at 100%. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go for 25%. How's that looking? Clicking down. You can see the way it's now bulging out, looking pretty good like that. So uh, still a little bit big. So let's go for 12%. That's looking better and let's take it up to 100%. That's the default. You can now drop it down until you get something that suits the image you're working with. I'm going to take mine to this area here. We got 87%. We're going to click OK to that. There it is. Looking pretty good so far. Right, using Command D, Control D. Command D, Control D. We have now removed that selection. OK, next we are going to be using FX. We're going to be using layer styles. We're not going to be using that one just yet. So let's just come up. We're going to go to, uh, let's go to drop shadow. Now with drop shadow, just select any of these, double click. That's applied the drop shadow. Let's go back to layers. Now that we've done that, you'll notice we've now got a little FX icon telling us there is a layer style on this particular layer. Double click on the FX brings up and there it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click down. We can move it out. And as soon as I click down, You'll notice I've got the move tool. All right, I already had the move tool, but even if I changed it to the hand tool, whatever, as soon as you get to this dialog box, you will get your move tool back. I'm going to bring it out like this. The size I'm going to take up, and as the size is increasing, you'll notice the way it's softening it out. That looks pretty good like this. Okay, let's go to glow. We're going to click on glow, and you'll notice we've now got a drop down menu. We're going to go for inner glow. Now the inner glow, if I bring the size up, you can see that's what it's doing to the image. I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to click in the little yellow box there. I'm going to bring my cursor out. I'm going to select a color from the image, perhaps something in this area here. And it's worth just clicking around until you find one that uh, works with your picture. I'm going to go for that blue color, just make it a bit brighter. Click OK to that. And the size, you can see the way we can bring the size into that area. That looks pretty good, so let's click OK. Right, we're going to duplicate this layer. So using Command J, Control J. And what we're also going to do is I'm just going to come over where it says Effects. I'm going to right click. 
and I'm going to go to clear layer style so we've just removed the layer styles so, so now we've just got a normal layer you can see if I switch it off that's the layer underneath this is the one we're now working with I'm going to go down to FX now with FX we're going to come to the drop down menu and I'm going to go for glass buttons and with glass buttons uh, it's worth trying something like this and you're thinking yeah that looks pretty good like the effect on this particularly like that uh, glow around the outside and it's worth checking some of the others as well we've got a nice purple there we've also got the wow plastic so taking a look at the wow plastic which have got to be good if it's got a wow in it and uh, yeah some interesting ones here as well let's just take a look at this one let's go back to the layers so clicking on this icon here we're now back on the layers we're going to change the blend mode from normal we're going to go to soft lights now that allows us to see through it and you can now see the color that we've got with this layer style let's click on this let's just take a good look around now we've got a drop shadow do we need it there's the drop shadow there now we're going to switch this off let's have a look at the glow if I switch the glow on and off do we need this no so we're going to switch that off however the bevel like this on the image if I just move this across there's our bevel that's looking pretty good let's come to the angle as well and we're going to move it round into this area here so we've now got that bevel coming round that part of the image that's looking pretty good color looking just a little bit bold but we're not going to worry about that because we're going to come up to the opacity slider and we're going to blend this down and as we start to blend it down into that area something like this yeah like the way that's working switching that on and off you can see the difference that's making to the picture in fact we're going to come back to this one take a look at the inner and just see how that's working no, I like what that's so we can still use this we can still come to the drop shadow for example I can click down there's our drop shadow moving that so it's opposite where we got the, uh, the highlight on this area our drop shadow is now coming down directly opposite that right clicking OK to this for the next stage we need to put a top part to our bobble so make sure you're working on the top layer of the layer stack we're going to put in a new empty layer we're going to come over to the toolbox this time we're going to pick up the uh, marquee tool so I'm going to come in and there it is going for the rectangular marquee tool we're going to click down I'm going to drag it out into an area like that that looks pretty good again I've got the new selection which is that first little icon in that means I can click down and we can move it around I'm going to place it into this position yeah that looks pretty good like this and if you think it's uh, you need it a little bit bigger a little bit smaller don't forget you've got select transform selection we can now come to the grab handles I can move that into this area I can move it across double click into apply right if that happens just use command Z control Z that brings it back so I just double clicked I won't click too many I think and there it is we've now brought back our selection now we're on a new empty layer I'm gonna pick up the gradient tool make sure you got the default colors black as a foreground white as a background press D on the keyboard if you've got any other colors we're going to go down to and we're going to pick up the linear gradient the opacity is set to 100 we're going to come over to our little collar that we're creating here and I'm going to click down drag it out now if you press shift on the keyboard shift on the keyboard just helps to give you a perfectly horizontal line now that's going to work better like that Across it goes if you want to change the way this is looking don't be afraid to click down if I click and drag from that area we're increasing the amount of black if I click from just inside bring it out into that area and you can see the way we can move it around so just take a little bit of time until you get an effect that you like there's something in that position great stuff now what we're also going to do with this is while we're at it we're going to drop down to the effects we're going to come up we're going to change it to bevel and with bevel I'm going to click on this one here and if I just use command D control D you can see the way that's applied a bevel to this area here while we're at it let's go to drop shadow I'm going to click on this one that's now applied a drop shadow to it as well we're going to go back to layers by clicking on the little layer icon and if I double click where it says effect taking a look at this yes there's our drop shadow I can move my cursor out I can now place our drop shadow perhaps into this area like that let's take the size up the size is going to soften that drop shadow and we can now move it so it's into this area just want to give it a little bit of contacts and 
the way I'm looking at that now, I've just got perhaps a little bit too much as if it's flying away. So uh, just reining that in a touch or two and just moving it up. Can be a bit fiddly, but worth the effort there. That will do nicely. Click OK to that. For the next stage, we need to put a loop on top of our collar. So we're going to put in a new empty layer. We're going to come back over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool again. So make sure you've got the elliptical marquee tool with the new selection. I'm just going to close that down for a second. I'm going to bring my cursor out. I'm going to press and hold down shift on the keyboard. Don't forget holding down shift is going to give you a perfect circle when you bring it out. I'm going to take it into that area there. That looks pretty good like this. Now to actually fill this we're going to go to, well, I'm not going to fill it, we're going to go to edit, we're going to stroke it. So we're going to put a stroke outline selection. Clicking on this, stroke width 25 pixels you can change you can adjust it but I've got a feeling 25 is going to be about the size I need for this I'm going to change the color as well we don't want black I'm going to go for a light color something like this we're going to click OK that's for the color click OK again this is going to apply the stroke around it goes we can now use command D or control D that's command D control D and there it is but you will notice it is on the outside of our collar so all we need to do now is just click on the collar. We're going to lift this up so it's above our loop. In it goes, now placing the loop behind. But that loop looks just a little bit on the flat side. Bringing our cursor over where it says FX, I'm going to press and hold down the Alt or the Option key. So click and hold down Alt or Option. Click on that little FX icon. Because you're holding down Alt or Option, you'll notice the FX and a double arrow bring it so you, as soon as you bring it over layer 3 look what's happening you can see that sort of yeah, rectangle that dark rectangle we can now drop it into position and look at that we've now changed it if I double click where it says effects I'm going to go straight down to bevel I'm just going to move this up until we get a loop just moving it very very slightly to the right that area there looks about perfect I'm going to click OK to that job done so far just looking a little bit uh, off center there, so I'm going to press V on the keyboard. That's a really handy shortcut to give me the, my move tool. I'm going to place it into that position, something like this. Yeah, that would be ideal. You can always use the arrow keys on the keyboard as well. So using the arrow key, I can just nudge it around. I'm just using the right and the left arrows. That looks pretty good like that. You can also use the up and the down arrow. Just going to place it into that position. Brilliant. Right, a finishing touch. We're going to use the custom shape tool. We're going to drop down to the tool options and with the tool options let's just click on here. You've got the defaults. I'm going to change this to, I'm pretty sure it's under objects. Do you know I can never find these? Yeah there it is, the bow. But you've also got in with the bow you have also got the holly there. You might like to try that one as well. With this entire th you know creating a ball, well it's all about experimenting and see what works with your pictures. But I'm going to select the bow going to come to the side here. Now this is giving us the option to pick various bits and pieces. We've got the uh, bevels, we've got the drop shadows, we've got the glass beat, we've got all these various options that we can apply to this. In fact, let's get a little bit experimental. Let's go for the glass beads, let's go for this sort of thing, the glass button, should I say glass beads? Where did I get that one from? And I'm going to click on, let's go for there, the magenta. That looks pretty good like that. Right, now that we've got this, I'm going to bring it out. So I'm going to click down, I'm going to drag it over the top of my loop, releasing it like the way that's working. I like, glad I wait for that magenta one now. That looks pretty good. I'm going to press uh, Command or Control, pressing Command or Control, and you'll notice the way the cursor changes to an arrow. Because it's a path, you'll notice all those little dots appearing. Don't worry, just going to move it into position. And uh, yeah, once again, you'll notice half of it is disappearing. So we're going to click on this layer. We're going to lift it so it's on top of the layer stack. There it is. As soon as we click down, you'll notice all those lines. Yeah, they have all disappeared. That looks pretty good. We're going to double click because what we need to do with this is just take a look. There's our bevel and you can see the way we can change. We can adjust this. We've got an inner bevel there as well. And as we change that inner bevel, look at all the inner glow, should I say, so busy concentrating I missed that bit but you can see the way we can actually change the color as well that's looking pretty good just taking a look at the angle just into that area there like the way that's looking great stuff job just about done 
there it is. Put it aside, save it in layers. I think the one thing I am going to do with this is drop straight down to the background layer using Command J, Control J. I'm going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to go to Filter. We're going to go to Blur. We're going to go to Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to blur it by that amount. That looks pretty good. What have we got? We've got 8.9. Click OK. So just blurring down the background. Right, now that we've done that, taking a look around the picture, I think there's only one thing I would like to do, and that is looking at the edge here. It is just a little bit on the hard side. So I'm going to click on the layer one. That's the very first layer we produce with our glass bauble. We're going to go to filter. I'm going to drop down to blur. We're going to come over to Gaussian blur. Now the amount that we actually used for blur in the background, I've got a feeling it was 8.9. It was something like that, isn't, wasn't it? Which is just a little bit too much. You can see we're beginning to lose our snowman. But if we drop it down into this area, bring your cursor out over the edge, and you can see what I mean about that edge being just a little bit on the hard side. So we need to bring it in. We're going to take it, and as we start to move it across, look at the way. If you bring it, there's the before reducing it, there's the after. You see the way we're beginning to soften that down nicely, taking it into this position here. That looks pretty good like that. Look at the image now. It really does give a nice soft edge to it. Click OK to it, and there it is. I'm going to use Command-0, zero, Control-0 zero to put it on screen, so that's fit on screen. Uh, if you want to move the entire, because don't forget we've got quite a few layers here, just click on either the top or the bottom layer. Now press Shift on the keyboard, click in on the top layer there, they're now all selected. I can press V, you can move this around, you can move everything together, that's all of the layers including the collar, the bow, the two glass objects, placing it into that position. That looks pretty good. And there it is, job done. Right click in. I'm going to place it onto a black background. I'm going to press tab on the keyboard to remove all the panels. There is our glass bauble. Go on, have a bit of fun with it. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.